1920, what you have in places like the Madras and Bombay presidency were very lopsided societies. A majority of elites in the British bureaucracy in the Madras and Bombay were high caste Brahmins. And so if you look at research from the early 20th century, you see very clear strategies by Brahmin elites across the districts to make sure that they monopolize access to public goods, especially education. And this is most pronounced in the Madras presidencies. Brahmins make a concerted effort to make sure fewer primary schools are built, more secondary schools are built. Why is that? Because most Brahmin kids are already educated in primary education. The big beneficiaries of secondary education would be the kids of themselves, whereas a large proportion of the population was uneducated. And suddenly in 1920, you get the first elections. And who is going to come to power? For the very first time, it would be lower castes. It would be the non-Brahmins in the Madras presidency, similarly to the non-Brahmins in the Bombay presidency. And these groups wanted integration. They wanted reservations. They wanted access for their kids to school. And so suddenly you have incumbent elites worried about what the state was going to be used to who turn anti-statist. And so you see a deliberate effort by these groups to then weaken the state capacity to be able to actually provide those goods. So they go after taxation, they go after the bureaucracy, they go after you know specific arms of the bureaucracy that are needed to efficiently function, to collect revenues, to be able to provide these public goods. So this prospect of social integration that comes with democracy in certain places turns certain groups of people against the state.